La da 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 So much the John Show. I'm here this evening. Midday connection, baby. How y'all is? Come, come on in, Victoria and uh, uh, Ramsey and Carter and India and uh, Doc Rick. Uh, who else is it? Riddle and Jenny and Brenda and Victoria and a whole bunch of y'all. Nedra Brooks. Hey, I want to talk about this, Sherry Lynn. I want to talk about this, DM. I'm going to talk about this. I want to talk about this. great song man that's a great song um that boy that boy he really wrote his butt off on that song i want to talk about these terms y'all use b b's and holes and mm -hmm. and uh, um all these terms i put here on my facebook wall today both of you on youtube how y'all is hit the thumbs up and share if you please sub to describe subscribe i put a post up there and i talked about bees and tricks and holes the, these are terms that black women are called white women are called that too but where did they get it from if you look on some of these tv shows you'll see white women calling themselves the same thing now that black women call themselves it's like the n-word well let's say nigger that's the word that we're using now and white people use it freely because it is in our culture it is in hip-hop uh, not just the music, but the culture itself. All right. And so when white people, um, whites are the ones that buy most of the hip hop. Uh, they became wealthy through white people. More white people buy hip hop than we do. We will borrow it. <laughs> okay. We will, uh, we will download from somebody else's account and all that stuff. All right. But they buy it. And so they call, they bombard the concerts and what have you. And then what do they do? They take on the culture. They begin to dress like us and nigga is free. So I see out here when I was in South Dakota, some of my students was calling each other nigga. And I was like, wait a minute. Whoa, bro. Hey, you can't call him a nigga. Why? Why not? Ain't, ain't that's what y'all call each other? And I stood, I stood back and I says, you know what? That little, that little white boy is correct. He said, ain't that what y'all call each other? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. in, 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 in my car, when I hear y'all's music, I hear nigga. And, ain't that something? So that's my nigga. My, that's my, he, he, my, he my boy. That's my friend, Mr. Jones. I'm like, mm, mm. sit down, boy. Let me talk to you. <laughs> Nigel says, burn a copy. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's, this is what they get it from. All right, so I've got some things I want to bring out. Uh, my voice is not that great because I was at church Sunday, so you know what's happening here. Mm -hmm. I have a conference call, yeah, mm -hmm. but I just came through just to say, <laughs> okay, all right, well, see you after the conference call. Uh, be kind and rewind. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, uh, let's talk about this because uh, I want to make sure that the young people are very uh, aware that we know. We get it. We are part of the problem. 
We, who are your daddies and your mothers and your grandmothers and grandfathers, we, we did this to you. We did. We did. And then now what we're doing, we're trying to stop it. We're trying to say, shut it down. We're trying to say, boycott that station. Or boycott the Dove Awards. Uh, Y'all know I'm going to talk about Kirk Franklin later on, okay? That new thing that just hit today. Uh, boycott the Word Network. Okay? We, we call, we've caused this, this, this stuff, all right? We've done it. We let it go on and on and on. So let's talk about this. Mm -hmm. Lucas, uh, Valina, but you know, I could, Lucas, I, I don't know. I, I wish I knew how to say it. Is it Valina or Valina? Which, which one is it, Lucas? I know. <laughs> you and, um, you got, your godmother, uh, Annette is here. All right, listen, I'll be on the Annette Harris show come Wednesday to talk about, um, counseling. This Wednesday at 12 o'clock p.m. Central. This Wednesday. Two days from now. Uh, I got some things here I want to talk about. 13 words that changed from negative to positive. Y'all know if you're going to watch my show, it's going to be entertaining, yes, but more educational than anything because I like to go back. Here is where I begin to lose people because I'm finding out that a lot of African Americans don't like to learn <laughs> from back then. Valina, Nedra says, Valina, thank you. Thank you for correcting me, yes, because I was like, okay, what is it? What is it? I like Valina better. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. History. 13 words. All right. 13 words. Uh, one of the main reasons for the existence of slang is to keep the outsiders from understanding the insiders. Y'all understand what I'm saying? To keep the outsiders from the insiders. So we created, y'all remember uh, what we can, we may call pig Latin. Mm -hmm. We got Ebonics. All right, we've got certain uh, languages that we create. Uh, they're codes, okay? White folk got codes too. They don't think we know the code, but we understand the code, all right? Which led to much of the continued oppression of my people. We know the code. We know, we know the dog whistle. Mm -hmm. Making up new words is one way to achieve this, but it's not the only one. So a favorite trick for the youngs, young people to play on the old is to take an established word and completely change its connotation from bad to good. Nigga, be arch, okay? It's funny when I say be arch, some of my deep kitchens will say, ooh, he cuss. But grandmama, remember when you, my grandmama said piss, mm -hmm, and I said she was cussing, all right? Well, I said, grandmama, why can't you say pee? You said piss, piss, ooh, my God, grandmama, you, she said, go piss. I'm like, mama, it's, it's pee. Or at least urinate. That's why you cussing. She's like, that's not cussing. That's 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 what the word is. And then I I looked in the Bible, and I realized it is in there. Piss is in the Bible. <laughs> oh, pisseth it says in King James. All right. But then I look at some of the old terms that our our grandparents, our fathers and mothers use it. If they say shoot, well y'all know shoot is sh s h i t. I said so. Why can you say why can't why can't I say be arch? But you can say shoot or poop. Okay, they they want to cuff so bad. Uh uh or uh, what's the other one? What what's the other one? Oh, uh, instead of saying hell, they're saying heck. Well that's saying you're really saying hell. <laughs> okay. So it's all <laughs> it, it just makes me laugh because what may seem to be so uh damnable in one generation is not so damn damnable in another. So that's why we have these terms today. Every generation in our music and in our language, we change it. And the generation before us is upset with the new language, is upset with the new music, is upset with the, the, the dress code, is upset the way we wear our hair and color our hair and our face. It's upset. All right. So my parents was upset with our culture and I got upset with my children's culture and it go, it will continue. You understand? Y'all y'all getting educated yet? Uh, okay. So a favorite trick is for them to change it. All right. So in recent decades, we've been sick. Man, that's sick. Oh uh, man, you, man, that, that's some that's some wicked chords. That's wicked chords. Or uh, man, you ill. Man, you ill and out. All right. Or oh, man, that's bad. That's nineteen seventies. That's a bad suit. Okay. Recruited to the hearty positive endorsement. All right, side. That's what it means. So while some would lament the decline of language suggested by such wanton, uh, respected or, or disregard for word meaning, this kind of meaning switch is nothing 
new. I'm going to surprise y'all with the 13 words here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, freaking. Thank you, Mike. Uh, Michelle King. I'm sorry, Michelle King. Michelle. Do I know Michelle King? Mich uh, Mich Michelle Thomas. I do know Michelle King. Uh, freaking. Men's, yeah, that's it. Or dope. Thank you, Nedra. Dope. Mm-hmm. Yeah, or saying Nedra when her name is Nedra. <laughs> okay? All right? Uh, so this kind of meaning switch is nothing new. So here are 13... Uh, uh, up, upstanding words that long ago switched from negative to positive. Y'all ready for this? Here it is. Number one, the word fun. F-U-N. Fun. Yes. Fun was first a verb meaning to cheat or hoax. Fun. Mm -hmm. It came from F-O-N. Fun. And uh, an old word for fool. So it still retains some of that sense of uh, make fun of, but now uh, also means a merry good time. So fun, let's have fun, meaning to make fun of or to cheat or to hoax. Yes, Nidra. She says Nidra. <laughs> That's a Nidra. Okay, number two, fond, F-O-N-D. Aren't you fond of me? I'm fond of you. Which says fond also goes back to F-O-N, and it it once meant foolish and weak-minded. Ooh. Mm-hmm. It came to then mean over-affectionate in a negative, a, cl a clawing, a cloying way. C-L-O-Y-I-N-G. Cloying way. So now it's a positive, but at root being found of something is basically being a food for. Fond. Uh, the next one, number three, is terrific. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> Michelle King. I keep, why you keep calling you King? Michelle, no matter, maybe I need to call her. Uh, Michelle Thomas says, uh, I'm freaking, freaking mad right now. <laughs> uh, Annette uses that too. I've heard her use that. I'm so freaking mad at you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she's used that. Uh, number three, terrific. It's terrific. That should be a good word, right? The word terrific is terror. And it first meant terror-inducing. It then became an exaggerated intensifier. Ter uh, ter terrificate, terrific, terrifically, <laughs> terrifically good. So good, it's terrifying. That's what terrific means. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes God is uh, called uh, um, a terrible God. He's terrible. All right? So in that instance, is it bad or is it good? Okay? Uh, number four, tremendous, tremendous. Yeah, he just says, I'm fond of you. Tremendous, like terrible. Tremendous has its roots in fear. Something tremendous was so terrible, it caused trembling or shaking. Uh, tremendous. That's tremendous. All right. You're butchering these words. I know in that. Number five, awe, A-W-E. According to the Oxford Dictionary, all originally referred to immediate and active fear. Now when we see something beautiful, we, we are in awe of it. Okay? It then became associated with religion and reverential uh, fear. We, we, we stand in, I stand in awe of you, oh God. Okay? And then to a feeling of being humbled at the sublime. While awful retains the negative sense. Or some took on the positive one, you see. So when you were in awe, remember the strike the government did to who is it? Uh, shock and awe. Remember that? That's that was that's what the word originally mean. But we put awe some uh, in it, and well, now that's what it's called. All right, number six, grin. G R I N. Grin to grin was to bear the teeth in a threatening display of anger and pain. Mm -hmm. It then became the term for forced fake smile uh, before settling into an expression of happiness. Grin. Mm -hmm. I sure grin. Number seven, smart. Mm -hmm. Smart was used in the old English to describe things that caused pain. Annette, you smart. <laughs> Deidre. Deidre and Michelle, how smart are you? Pain. Says weapons, nails, and darts were smart. Ooh, that's smart. You would hear that in the old terms, in the old uh, shows of the 
20s and 30s. Ooh, that's smart. Okay? Well, that's what it comes from. I heard that from the little rascals. Ooh, that's smart. So Shakespeare Henry the Sixth has the phrase, as smart as lizards stings. It took on connotations of sharpness, quickness, intensity through smart pain, on and on. All right? Number eight, egregious. Egregious. Are we talking about girlfriends calling each other these names in terms of endearment or self? It was, yeah, both of them, Brentic, both of them. Egregious. Egregious was a positive word that turned negative. It used to mean eminent and distinguished, all right? Uh, but because people started using it sarcastically, it came to mean bad or offensive, uh, egregious. Number nine, sad. I mean, surely that was always, that always was a negative uh, uh, in, in, emoticon of depression, right? Sad. But sad started with the meaning of satisfied or sated. Also, sometimes steadfast or firm, it then went from meaning serious to grave to sorrowful. You got it? I got got three more. Four. Smug. Number 10. Smug. Smug first meant crisp, tidy, and presentable. You are smug. Those I'm about to call y'all's names. A well-dressed person was smug in this way, and it later uh, came to, to mean self-satisfied and conceited. You are, I'm smugly dressed right now, okay? Number 11, devious, devious. Devious came from the, uh, from devia, off the way. It once meant distant or off the road, all right? We deviate as, you, as we see today. It took on the meaning of wandering. There were devious comments, devious minnows, and it became, uh, uh, because to do, Wrong was to stay from the right path. It eventually came to mean scheming or deceitful. Two more. Facetious. Facetious. To be facetious was once to have elegance, which means I'm always facetious every day around 3 o'clock p.m., all right? Elegance, gracious, high style, and to be jokey and witty. Mm -hmm, uh -huh. So it came from a Latin term for playful humorousness, and it is still connected with the type of humor, but with an un, uh, unproductive or annoying connotation. You being facetious. Shut up. All right. Last but not least, 13, bullying or bully. You are bully. Well, bully used to be a term of endearment for men and women. I got a few of them here, Annette and Brentick. In Nidra, <laughs> y'all are bullies. So it says a bully could be a good friend or a sweetheart. Could be, all right? But it then came to stand for a swaggering braggart and then a coward who picks on others. So there you have it. I will not ever use those words as terms of endearment. If I use them, I will uh, I, I will be meaning to demean what? Demean... <laughs> Michelle, so so here you have it. I even look at the word uh, uh, nitty gritty, the, the term nitty gritty. We use that and say, you get into the nitty gritty truth. Well, nitty gritty is not really a good word to use if you understood the connotation or the meaning or the, the, the derivative etymology of the word. It Really, the nitty gritty was the fecal matter at the bottom of the slave ships, all right? I just visited the... Wright, what is his name? Something Wright Museum in Detroit, Michigan. I was there a few days ago, uh, and I went to Motown Museum, and then I went to the to the uh, whatever his first name is, Wright African American Museum. It is huge. It is beautiful. I never knew it was there. Never knew it was there. We always hear about the one in Washington, but this one is very beautiful. And you go down up under the museum, and there they created a slave ship. And they put a whole bunch of black bodies, uh, these are mannequins, in the bottom of this ship. And they stacked them uh, 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 in long rolls. And, you, and they turned on a, uh, uh, a video, not a video, but an audio of the sounds of them, them crying and the slave masters whipping them and their moanings and the, the women crying. And you got to walk through there. And all kind of emotions was going, was coming, going to go through me. Charles, thank you, Terry Lockhart, Charles Wright. All kind of emotions was going through me. 
to hear my people cry and moan like that. But then he reminded me of the word nitty gritty because that's what the slave master called the grit that was at the bottom where they had to clean up. The slave master would say, go down there and clean up the nitty gritty. That's what it comes from. All right. So I love words and I love their origins. And if you find out what they meant, then maybe some of you will stop using them. But I don't know if we could. Uh, is it OK to take words and re, re uh, put new meanings on them? In some cases, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, that's another show. Uh, did it stink? No, it didn't stink. Thank, thank God they didn't give us the smell of it. But uh, I just can't. Uh, I can't. I, I had to leave that portion really fast. And so there's an article here of CNN says how the B word is used to keep women down. All right. Question: When aren't women totally B bees? Okay. Repurpose. Thank you, Walt Clark. So glad you're here. Uh, repurpose. Repurpose. Um. Terry, yes, I was in your city for one day. <laughs> I went there to get some great video for, for my show, uh, and, and I did. I was able to accomplish all of that. Um, for a highly evolved society so intrigued by the invested in progress, it's funny how such an archaic word, B, B, B I T C H, is an archaic word. Remember the show I did and I talked about how this preacher said you have a B spirit? He said bitch spirit, all right? I'm going to say that one time in this show and then I'm going to stop because my mama might be watching this, all right? He said you have a B spirit. <laughs> you remember that show I did? And then he said you're ugly. <laughs> okay. It's not funny, but it, it's just the way. Okay, focus, all right? It's an archaic word, a demeaning women since the early 15th century, all right? But it managed to stick around, that word. Manage to stick around. So it, it goes on. But there's a there's a portion here in this article that I want to read. Um, uh, where where is it? Which part did I want to read? Because it was it was apropos for where I wanted. Oh, he says here, a sure feminist unwittingly and otherwise have attempted to reclaim it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, uh, bad bees, rad bees, uh. How I say this word? Itching itches. Itching itches. Okay? B. Itches. It, you get it. Okay? Uh, all these words you see. All right? Blessing to you, Marlon McDaniels. Good to see you, sir. Of course, then there's Kanye West's ode to his wife. Now, I know this is not the new Kanye West who has um, secured y'all's blessings of liberty in his life of holiness. <laughs> I believe I, I got Kanye on... Um, on probation. Kanye is on probation. All right. So I will not be doing any shows on Kanye until I, until he's, until I need to. All right. So don't nobody come to me about, look what Kanye just did. You're going to talk about, it. no, I got him on probation. Now, how long my probation? You know, when you start your new job, his probation is usually six months, right? I'm not going to wait six months, but I've got him on probation. So spiritual probation. So I'm going I'm to leave him alone. Let him infiltrate his his newfound spirituality into the into the world and in y'all's minds, and y'all sit back and watch. You get it? All right. So, but this Kanye did an ode to his wife in the song "Perfect Bee." He called his wife a perfect bee arch. All right, mm -hmm. which is loving. It's loving, I think. Right, but when it comes down to its most common usage, the word has not escaped its derogatory origins. Ultimately, seeking to keep women down by condemning basically that which makes them women. Condemning, all right. Which basically this is which makes them women. So what is this? This is the sapphire. Anybody remember sapphire caricature? The sapphire caricature. Portrays black women as rude, loud, malicious, stubborn, overbearing. Okay, you are an angry, bitter black woman, and popularized in the cinema and on television. All right, look at the women uh, that played these, even mammies. Uh, look at the uh, look at Gone with the Wind. All right, look how angry, even though she was uh, um, in in the big house. Uh, Hattie McDaniels, is that her name? She won the, the first African-American to win an Oscar. 
All right, we were so proud of her, but her role was, of course, was subservient, and she played the very angry Negro. All right, look at some of the TV shows. Even after that, when we finally uh, made prominence on television, I mean, all the way prior to the 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 the, the look of um, my my wife who died just a few a few uh, a couple of weeks ago, Julia. All right. Julia played a single mom. All right. With, with a son at home. She was a nurse. All right. She was independent. She worked. All right. What have you. And that was the first time we had seen a woman in the light like that who wasn't bitter, who didn't look, who didn't portray the sapphire character. We were proud of Julia. All right. Yeah. Hattie, Mc, Hattie McDowell, Donald, Donald or something like that. All right. So when we look at, look at, uh, can y'all name some other TV shows or movies where the woman plays this so-called sapphire character of the bitter, black, angry, stubborn, malicious, loud, and rude woman, all right? And this is the depiction that white America see in, they think that all black women are that way. And look how black, uh, how white uh, actors or uh, comedians portray black women. As soon as they on stage or whatever, and, they, and they're getting ready to uh, talk about a black woman, they go right into character and it's always sassy. It's always loud and flamboyant and what have you. They go right into that character because that is what they see. They look at Tyler Perry's mud deer as all mud deers was that way. But my mud deer was no way like that. My mud deer, God rest his soul, was the antithesis of what we see portrayed in the mud deers on the big screen. Pam Greer, Nietzsche says, Pam Greer, perfect example. Black exploitation movies, you'll see this boisterous, this rude and obnoxious, and yes, precious, the movie Precious. Florence of the Jefferson, very snazzy and snappy and sarcastic and disrespectful to her own boss. Uh, the, the, the Popeye's chicken lady. <laughs> Walk clerk. I don't know. Would y'all agree with the Popeye's chicken lady? She seems to be so nice. She seems. In a business type way, the actors get to see it. Uh, Tasha Smith. Oh, wait, you tagging Tasha. Okay, I'm like, who's Tasha Smith? Okay, uh, the character Angela from Tyler Perry. Why did I get married? Angela. Exactly. Perfect example. Uh, did y'all think, well, um, look at Willona on um, Good Times. What about Florida Evans? All right, was she snappy? Did she play this role? Okay. Oh, did they sneak that in every now and then and then pull her back? What about uh, Claire Huxtable? She was very professional, right? Uh, but she got mad sometimes with her children. And maybe her husband, or maybe in the court, there was a couple of times, there was a scene in the courthouse where she was very bold, all right? When white people see that woman come out, then she is this sapphire caricature. Notice what I'm saying here. You could have a easy, uh, very well balanced life uh, on the screen until you get upset, and as soon as you get upset, black women, then you are a sapphire. When white women get upset, right then she just got angry at that moment, and then, but when a black woman gets angry one time, guess what she turns into? Who did this? The pine saw lady. <laughs> That's it. Natasha Smith is an oh, Tasha Smith is an actress who plays an angry black woman. And, oh, Tyler Perry. Oh, Tasha Smith. Got you. Thank you, Michelle. Who 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 tagged? It was who that the tag? Cortez Little. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Jennifer Lewis on Blackish. They they and they brought up Blackish. Walt Clark in this article here. Mm, popularizing cinema. She is a tart tongue and emasculating. One hand on the hip. And the other pointing and jabbing or arms, you know, Eskimo and a, 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 a Kimbo, whatever they, they use, okay, violently and rhythmically rocking her head, mocking African American men for offenses ranging from being unemployed to sexual pursuing, pursuing white women. How dare you, all right? She is a, a shrill nagger with ir irrational states of anger and indignation and is often mean-spirited and abusive. And black men have fallen into that narrative that every time our black woman get angry, we say, bitter, you crazy. You are a bipolar. 
neck moving. <laughs> Need you okay? Something wrong with this chick. That that girl crazy. That chick crazy. That's what we call black women. You crazy. As soon as you have no right to be angry at no time. You have no right or justification to be righteously indignant. So if you do it one time, you crazy. You bitter. All right? You got a mental problem. That's what black brothers do to you. Uh, they've come to this conclusion on you, young ladies. Mm -hmm. So uh, she is uh, uh, African. So although African-American men are her primary targets, she has venom for anyone who insults or disrespects her and the sapphire desire to dominate and her hypersensitivity to injustice makes her a perpetual complainer. If you watch Fox News and you see uh, Kavya, what's her name, AOC? Well, well, I never could say her name, all right? Or if you see uh, Auntie um, uh, Maxine Waters, or if you see um, who's that running for president, if you see any of these black women state their case or defend um, um, their right or their their people or injustice, if they defend them by raising their voice, then Fox News were portrayed as angry black woman. Mm -hmm. But she does not criticize to improve things. Rather, she criticizes because she is uh, unendingly bitter and wishes that unhappiness on others. The Sapphire caricature is a harsh portrayal of African-American women, but it is more than that. It is a social control mechanism that is employed to punish black women who violate the societal norms that encourage them to be passive, servile, non-threatening, and most importantly, unseen. 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 And it goes on into the into crazy history, Amos and and Andy, Amos and Andy, and it goes on and on with the whole subculture. You look at uh, Aunt Esther on um, Sanford and Son, how she played two negative roles. Number one, a sassy black woman. Number two, a sassy black Christian woman, apparently from a Baptist church. All right, you old fish eye food, yeah, our glory. All right, she, that role right there is typical what we see from the characters that white people see, that Aunt Esther character, all right? That is Sapphire to a 2.0, all right? And, and they, they break down quite a, quite a bit uh, of these caricatures uh, that uh, even, they, uh, look at Martin, Pam, uh, B2B, okay? Pam James, or who, who was uh, always going back and forth with Martin. And, and gosh, Pam was considered the pretty one, the one that was more sexual to brothers. It was Pam that we loved so much. You know, and she was sassy, but men wanted her. All right. Uh, Coffee, the movie Coffee, another black exploitation uh, movie. Um, gosh, it's it's so many that we can come up with. They they mentioned why, why uh, did I get married on here, for, for those of you who have been talking about it. All right. And then what you see, you turn on the Jerry Springer show. Um, the uh, I remember watching the Jenny Jones show. You turn on the Maury Povich show. You, I used to turn on the Ricky Lake show. And what did you see? You saw Sapphire on the, all those shows, all right? And so these, these white shows have been uh, making millions off of the antics by us. And then in walked Omarosa, Omarosa Menagog or whatever her name, okay, walked into the White House. Before she before she was in the White House, she was always Menagog, a Star Wars or, or something, okay? She always seemed to have that type of, uh, I would consider her uh, or like an, uh, uh, an out of control Olivia Pope. If we look at the, the character, caricature of uh, character, of why did I get married? What's her name? All right. Uh, uh, Mary, being Mary Jane, okay? Why is it when we see these shows, we see Sapphire pop up in our minds? That's Sapphire. 
Uh, some even call Michelle Obama a sapphire type character when she got upset. Isn't that something? Yeah. It's, it's so many. It's so many. And why is it? Why is this racial stereotype acceptable, not just among whites, but among ourselves as well? Um, uh, Newt Gingrich and the Republican Party rolled to anger of white men into political dominance in 1994. They're saying here, what were they angry about? Affirmative action, multiculturalism, liberalism. Few people, especially members of the dominant group, question whether white men had the right to be angry. After Senator Hillary Clinton lost her bid in 2008, uh, Democratic presidential nominee nomination, a great deal of media attention was given to angry white women, so angry they threatened to vote for the Republican candidate. Some of their anger was fueled by disappointment. That happens in every political campaign. Others were angry because Senator Clinton's campaign symbolized for them the struggles and promise of being women in this culture. All right. Some were angry about the sexist slurs and both thinly veiled and obvious and gross that were directed against Senator Clinton. These angry white women had many reasons to be angry. But the point here is that their right to be angry was rarely questioned. Mm. However, when strong-minded, high-profile black women expresses even a hint of displeasure at injustice in this culture, she is treated like a non-patriotic, ungrateful sapphire. And the black women who expresses anything short of patriotism that borders on chauvinism is condemned. Mm, mm. By, the, by the way, this is by Dr. David Pil, uh, Pilgrim. He's a professor of uh, sociology at Ferris State University. This is an article that was written in 2008 and it was, re it was edited in 2012. All right. What are you saying here? Um... And somebody put something down here. What were you saying? Just say, hey, hey, women love these words, especially blacks. But remember, it also comes from rapper. Yeah, we talked about this. Good to see you here in here, Justin. Uh, Beverly said that the key word is control. Control! All right, so um, this last article here, I'm not going to read all of it, but the title is Reality TV Gives the Angry Black Woman a Bad Name. Sometimes anger, they say, is a is a good thing. True. Uh, says, I've never gotten hooked on reality TV, yet it's important to deny the impact that shows like in, uh, the impact that shows like love and hip hop have an audience. Friends and social media introduced me to one of the franchise breakout stars, Cardi B, before I ever turn in for an episode. The times I have watched the heated disagreements between women on the show and others like it, during which drinks are often thrown and ex expletives flow, seem to common seem so commonplace. They're saying that all that it all became too predictable, and is a part of the reason why I never became a loyal follower. These reality TV shows are very loosely. Uh, scripted, so they're not really reality. They are scripted, much of it, because they want to make sure that you know, make it hot, make it spicy, make it violent, and that's what causes you to get hooked into it because you think this is really happening. Uh, it can spark into a inward uh, attribute of anger, but that's after the director says and action, right? As fictional TV shows seem to have grown more diverse in their depictions of black women, think blackish, insecure, and queen sugar. Mm -hmm. The reality realm hasn't quite kept up recycling some of the same imagery of black women as short-tempered and confrontational. And some critics say these shows perpetuate stereotypical images. Uh, particularly the angry black woman trope and a recently released survey suggests they have reasons to be concerned. 
the survey which ex examined perceptions of black women in media found that, watch this, 72% of the black women perceived depictions of themselves in the media negatively. 72% of y'all, you black women who are watching this, perceived it, uh, the pictures of being negative compared to 46% of the white women. Mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. The survey was coordinated by the American Advertising Federation, the AAF. Uh, uh, Zeta Phi Beta Sorority and the professors at the University of Missouri. Now watch this. 500 black and white women were surveyed earlier this year. And a follow-up survey included another 500 women of other races. And all were between the ages of 18 and 24. So that is the demographics, all right? It's the perfect demographics, all right? It's, that's a little bit below the demographics of my show, but Let's go on with it. So the survey followed a 2015 white paper and watch parties that explored the state of black images in media. So the results of the survey were announced during the recent legislative conference of Congressional Black Caucus in Washington. The survey explored viewership of specific reality TV shows, including Love, and Hip Hop Atlanta, Basketball Wives, and The Real Housewives. Of these surveyed, black women were watching more of the shows in question than white women. So beyond influencing uh, how other women might view black women, seeing these images can have an effect on black women's self image. And when asked about what descriptors they'd use to describe the way black women are depicted on reality TV, 53% of black women and only 37% of white women said argumentative. Argumentative. Y'all argue too much. Who's responsible for this? Hmm? That's why I watch nothing but British television. <laughs> American television is utter trash, Sherry Lynn says. But uh, Walt says, but don't we realize that our own culture has approved this in general through its uh, continued acceptance by watching these TV shows, Walt Clark, and that's how I'm going to end this show. Are you going to continue to blame the man for this? Hmm? Really? You're going to continue to say, it's not my fault that I'm paying for this cable television or this Redbox or Amazon Prime or Apple Fire or well, what's these other things, okay? It, it's, it's not my fault that I'm paying for this stuff. I have to watch it. I'm paying for it. I must watch it. It is important. It's imperative. I don't waste money. And you turn them on because you your excuses that you're supporting black actors and comedians and entertainers, just musicians. Let's support them. So you watch them, and then that poison is, it gets into you, and then it, you become desensitized to it. And then before you know it, a generation has been been in in uh, embedded uh, with all of this stuff. Okay overtaken by these these pictures and characters and before you know it it is normal it is it is um it's just as normal as waking up and brushing your teeth to watch these shows so when you turn them on you want something crazy to happen in that scene you're looking for it you're looking for it and so who rides again well who wrote the letter uh, says that if you give me uh, your black slave, I can enslave him for how many years did he say? Three, four hundred, five hundred years? And that's going on still today. You get a man's mind, you got his mind, body, and his soul. Um, Pitt says, I agree with Walt. Until we stop buying into the nonsense, uh, those who produce it will continue to make money, and black women will continue to have issues in all of their relationships. 
These television shows, I believe, are um, they are raising up our children. Can look at some of the things that come into y'all's inboxes and sometimes on the, your walls, where there's a black woman sitting in her car with her black child in the back seat or next to her. Or there's a black woman in her home and there's a black child, all right? And this black woman is filming this, filming this black child and the black child is cussing his or her mom out. And what's happening to the mother who's filming this? She's egging it on. 400 years, Willie Lynch, thank you, Cortez. Mm -hmm. She's egging it on. It is funny to her. And it's usually these young black girls. Where did they get this from? Hmm? Whenever we produce positive, we pay it no mind. John Butler says, I have to spend more money just getting it to reach those that want the positive period. John Butler, that's it. Mm -hmm. Yes, and that they're filming it and they're laughing. They're laughing. I told y'all of the, the thing that happened to me. In the grocery, no, it wasn't a grocery store. It was one of them liquor stores. I was hungry, y'all. I was in the hood. <laughs> I was hungry, and I, I wanted something. And that was the only store open within, seemed like a mile radius, because I was living in a food desert at the time. And I walked up. I had to walk up the street to this liquor store where there was only there was that was the only place to get some food at the time. And there was the black woman and her girlfriend and her child, who might have been six years old. It was cold, I remember, had my coat on, and the girl was ordering something from the bulletproof glass, you know, because, you know, Habib was on the other end. It was in our neighborhood, and that bulletproof glass was about that thick, and you got to scream so they poke holes, they poke holes. So y'all who live up north and down on the, on the east coast, west coast, yeah, I don't think y'all understand how rough it can be in our in our neighborhoods, all right? You got to scream, I want some chips. And he like, huh? You, you poke holes in that thing so what? So that you can breathe, or so that you can hear me? I want some chips. Yeah, you want the cheese, chips, Cheetos, chips. Okay, that's the way it is in our some of our neighborhoods. All right, so while I'm trying to scream my order to this, this Habib, um. Uh, the little boy is jumping up on the heater in the man's store, just jumping up and down on the heater. And then the mama finally said, uh, Johnny, of course, the name I'm sure is not Johnny. It's probably, it's probably the father's name mixed with the grandmama's name mixed with the mama's name, Lakeisha Quan, Quan, Quantessa Keith. <laughs> she, she wanted to give homage to her man, so... Keith LaQuisha Lanquata. Anyway, and then she went to Africa and found another name and, and added that in there as the middle name, right? And that's his name. So, she, Laquan, get off that thing. All right? And Laquan jumped off the thing. And that's like, and I was thinking to myself, nah, that's nice to be able to hear discipline uh, happening in my neighborhood. I don't usually hear that. I said, give me my, give me my chips. And then what that little boy said next was, uh, I have to drink. I always have to drink when I tell this story because... I want to kill. <laughs> I want to find a little kid. <laughs> okay. And what this little kid said next. Little kid said, F you, mama. Ah! I screamed like a little old, a little girl. Yes, I did. I screamed like a little girl. I had, I had my order in my hand. Okay. I had my order in my hand. I had my bag. I had everything. All right, all right, Mr. Habib. Thank you, man. I'll be back tomorrow because ain't no fresh food and vegetables in three miles from here. So I guess I got to... And he said, F you, Ma. Ah! <laughs> I fell. And I think I woke up two days later. I, I, I think they was fanning me. In the, and I said, oh, <clears throat> I got to go. And then, now, what the boy said was shocking. But what the mama said next was much more shocking for those of you who are new to the Sir Walter Jones show. You've heard this story before. But what the what the Sherry, what the mama said next, I fainted again. Mm -hmm. That's another thing we need to stop uh, buying from Habib. <laughs> Pits. Yeah. Uh huh. Yep. Yep. Justin Baby's having babies. Mm hmm. Yeah. So so mama mama turned to her friends and said. <laughs> Oh, you do hear what little Keyshawn said to me? Girl, I heard it. I heard it. Wasn't that cute? Come on, Keyshawn. Let's go, boy. And I fainted again. I think I woke up. I, I woke up and Trump was president. <laughs> okay. I couldn't believe it. I just, I just, I just couldn't. 
I was having all kind of, I, I think I went to the ER because I had shakes for three weeks after that. I had, I had the shakes because I kept thinking about how if I had even raised, if, if I had inhaled to even think to say that to my mom, my father would have already beat hell and brimstone and Gehenna and Hades and shield out of me. But if I had just, see, he could, he would have been able to read my mind. So as I inhaled to say something, I would have been dead. I'd have woke up dead. All right. And I'm thinking that is amazing. But then I thought babies are having these babies and they go to their, wherever they live and they turn on this stuff on TV and well, the culture is raising them. And then they turn on the radio or their CDs or iPods or whatever, and they hear this style of music that continues to enforce bees and holes. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, murder and drugs and all kind of lustful things. So the children hear that. So that's why now we see these videos on Facebook of the kid cussing the mother out and the mama laughing. <laughs> Say it again, little June June. And y'all are disgusted by it. But her friends always notice in the comments how the friends are like, that is funny as heck. That is, man, that's funny. Oh, that's hilarious. That little John John boy, I tell you, ha, ha. All her friends are enjoying it. So what is this? This is the culture. This title startled me. What kind of ratchet woman are you? <laughs> Carmen Davis. I know. I know. You must You must be new to the show. <laughs> Carmen Davis comes here all the time. Causing problems. Uh, that wasn't funny. That means the mama need her. Yeah. Uh, some some mature grandma need to. Yeah. I, I wasn't going to do it, Justin. I wasn't going to do it. Because if I had done it, she'd have called her brother, and, and he'd call his friends, they all gang members, they came and beat my butt for correcting her. You see, this is why they had to get corporal punishment out of the schools. The teacher can't beat the kids no more. Mm -mm, no, no, they can't do it no more. Because if the teacher raises her voice, his or her voice to the child, the child goes home, tells mama that they raised a voice, and guess what? The mama and the daddy, well, the mama, the daddy, I don't know where he is. The mama is going up to the school to beat Somebody, she going off. She going off. Mm -hmm. I heard a mother tell her kids, I mean, yelling, bring your blank, blank here. And you act just like your ugly, blank, 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 ugly, blank, 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 daddy. <laughs> Sherry. Yep, Sherry, there it is. John John would be a memory. <laughs> I can make another one. <laughs> well, Clark, that's it. You remind me of your daddy. You act and look just like your daddy. What is that doing to the child? Anybody want to know? So, I got to be well balanced here, y'all. I got to be well balanced. All right? Yes, some of you ladies have been... Uh, there's a misappropriations here, Amber. <laughs> there's there's mis misappropriations here or on these terms used to you that because you got angry, you should not be called these terms. That does not represent you whatsoever. Then there's your sisters, all right? Your sisters who should ever, never be called that whatsoever. Unfortunately, though, there is a lot of anger that is in that girl. There's a lot of bitterness that is in that girl, all right? Which causes her to act this way like that. Y'all remember New York? What's her name? I love New York. Uh, what's his name with the big clock? And featured her on the show, and then she got her new show. All right. Notice her attitude. All it took is all it takes is just a little bit of that, and then she's flipping. Uh, look at the. Uh, um, what's that show? Betrayal. Uh, what, what's the girl? The Wayans girl, remember in Living Color, and you remember the character that the that that Wayans the Wayans girls the sister, what's her name? And she would play this this sassy girl. What was her name? But but betrayal something like that. And she would play this character where nothing pleased her. 
she was always going off for anybody who looked at her funny or what have you. What was her what was her character name? And then and then she also played a character where she's always sitting in the window and she's looking out and says, Miss Betrayal, Miss uh, Miss B, Miss Webb, how you doing? So good to see you, blah, blah, blah. And then as soon as Miss Betrayal walk away, yeah, but her breath stinks. She gets on my nerve, blah, blah, blah. All right. This is the this is it's like it's like uh, fiction and reality coming together. Uh, you know, it's just, I don't know what to call it. Um, that's where a lot of his, his, this behavior is stemming from anger. And these women have been hurt down to their core. There it is, Sherry. And they don't know what to do with this anger. anger. And it hasn't been dealt with. She hasn't been able to talk about it because her circle of friends have the same problem. Birds of a feather. All right, blind leading blind, and they all are falling into ditches. And so they get older, and then they they then they, they bring this anger wherever they go, to, into the school, into the marketplace. Uh, I've seen them have, bring this anger into court and go off on the judge. Uh, they bring them into their marriage. Then they bring it into your church house, your houses of worship. And these same angry people are on the mother's board. They are their praise and worship leader. They're in the soprano section, the alto section, right? All right, they're, they're the, especially the usher. They're the ushers. <laughs> they peed off and angry. Why? Hasn't been dealt with. So what do we do? And what would it be if the church saints stopped watching? It would. It could. It could possibly bankrupt uh, these people who per portray these women in this light. But you're not strong enough. We don't. We don't. We don't. We're not strong enough to come together. We're not patient enough, and we have fear. Uh, because, um, Mike, what is his name? Amber, I think you and I were talking about this the other day. Mike, what is it? What was his name? Mike, the the show you show you uh in um, you uh, introduced me to on uh, Killer Mike's show. What is the name of that show? <clears throat> on um, Netflix, there is an episode where he decides to live without. He decides to live all black. So he, 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 how many, was it 24 hours, 48 hours? I can't remember that he lives totally black. That means everything that he, his survival is, uh, depending on black products. Yes. 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 Uh, Walt Clark, yeah, Killer Mike. And, 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 and it's not the Creflo Dollar. Was that the Creflo Dollar episode? I don't think it was. No. The episode where he lives total black. That means from the toothpaste to the toothbrush uh, to where he sleep to the car he drive. He couldn't drive no car. He had to ride his bike. He had to go to a black um, um, bike shop because that was his only mode of transportation. The clothes on his back and the shoes on his feet had to come from black designers. He couldn't sleep in hotels. You know what I'm saying? He, and he went to a black restaurant to order soul food, and he ordered all his food, and he was like, yes, finally. And then his partner in crime says, you know, that's not black. That didn't come from black. No, Nobody black sold that, uh, planted that, grew that. <laughs> he was like, what? He said, yeah, nope, no, mm -mm. And he said, he called the proprietor over. He says, where this coming from? And the, and the black proprietor was like, uh -uh, we didn't make this. <laughs> yeah. Trigger warning, yeah, that's called trigger warning, all right? We didn't make this, and so he said, uh, Killer Mike says, all right, I, 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 I'm gonna get a to-go bag because I can't, I can't eat this. And I think he, I think he, he got a to-go bag because why throw it out? Just give it to somebody who's in need. He couldn't eat it; he was starving, and he realized it was extremely difficult for him to survive on black products. He couldn't. There was a black cell phone company. He was shocked. And it's, it rhymes with nigger. <laughs> That's the irony of it. What was it called, Walker? Jigger? J what was it called? Something. But then it's the man's name who invented the phone. Uh, well, he didn't invent the phone, but you know what I mean. Yeah. Um, he, couldn't, he couldn't survive. So he had to go back to white products in order to survive. So sad. We need to change this. And then I know. So because he could not survive on anything black, what does that say today, y'all? What does that say?
Can y'all tell me what that says? It took me five plus years of isolation and counseling to heal from my hurt. Sherry Lynn is saying, uh, I had um, to get that out of me. It was killing me slowly. It was long, painful, and lonely road, but I am so glad I did. Today, I am the happiest I've ever been in, the, in my adult life. This is good, Sherry. This is good. I can't explain how happy and grateful to God um, for my new life, Sherry Lynn, and you're showing it. You can see it. You lost weight. You, your posts are um, very more inspirational. You ain't fighting with me as much as you used to. <laughs> you do seem very happy. And I tell you, I tell people all the time, this is the happiest I have ever been in my entire life. Ever. Now, what does that say? Some people are probably going to say, you're single, so you don't need a woman. So that that makes you happy? Well, no, it ain't got nothing to do with a woman. Because if I, if I was married, oh, trust me, I'd still be extremely happy. And I probably would be even happier because then I'll have somebody in my home who I can take care of, they can take care of me, and we will share our happiness together. So marriage could make me happier, yes. But I'm happy now in comparison to where I was. I've never been this more happy. Why did What happened? Well, it's over an extended period of time, you understand? See, because I had moments of happiness. When I had my son, Walter Jr., and my daughter, Rebecca, I was extremely happy when I had those children. I had happy moments here and happy moments there. And those moments was this short. All right, now my happiness continues with my children, but these other moments are short. But this is the longest I have ever been happy. Oh, no, this one needs a woman. We we don't we don't want to relive that episode. <laughs> Walt Clark. <laughs> Lord. Yes. Um, what y'all saying? My resolve is writing songs that speaks to the beauty of one. Yes. Hopefully it helps someone. Come on, John Butler, write them songs, man. Yes, write them songs. Black cell phone company that has to use white cell phone towers. Ooh, Walt Clark, you nailed it there, man. Yeah, there's no way around that. There's no way around that, man. But John Butler, I love that. Writing songs. What's that song? Even with the brothers, I need, I need to do a part two because there's some brothers I need to talk about. And y'all's misconduct. Uh, who's that? Angie Stone with the black brothers, strong brothers, da, da, da. Oh, what a great song. I mean, she and the video itself is amazing, okay? I loved it because it, it inspired the brothers. So we brothers, men, write most of the songs. Men write most of of the songs, especially the love songs, we wrote them. Even though women sing a lot of them down through the history of music, American music, if you listen to a hit song by a woman uh, prior to this past, you know, this this new era, but the old era especially, those songs, those hit songs written by women, I mean sang by women, were written by men. All right? So for a woman to say that men are not emotional, don't apparently have not sat down with herself and rethought that. Men are extremely emotional. We don't show it like you do. Listen to our music. Listen to the lyrics. We are absolutely emotional. And then follow us to certain places and you'll see our emotion. You just don't know that. And the girl next door, she know it. That's why he go next door. Because <laughs> she know. Uh, Walter, oh, oh, we're happy for you. Be happy, bro. <laughs> Yeah, come on, y'all. So these songs, y'all, y'all gotta get back to saying these wonderful songs for women. Tell them how beautiful they are. They're, they're queens and princesses. Something uh, in uh, the what was it? The Duchess of York's and Duchess of Albany Avenue. I don't know. Oh, y'all. I mean, y'all just get get the crooning. And these women would will turn. I mean, their focus would turn more so on every time they see the black brother. They say, "Ooh, he's getting ready to sing something beautiful to me. He's getting ready to speak life into me." Okay, re re um, focus your terminology, recreate and tear down and and build up, chip away all of that stuff that some other dude did to her, and introduce her to this beautiful, joyous sound of a man who praises her. And the Bible talks about 
uh, uh, heralding her or observing her or admiring her as a weaker vessel. The weaker vessel is not weaker mentality uh, because we are equal in uh, the wonderment and the glory of God's grace. We are on an equal platform, but physically we are not equal. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Be my girl by the dramatics. Come on, just my, just my lady. Yeah, come on, Freddie Jackson. Yeah, just be my lady. I'm thinking about two other ladies. <laughs> okay. Yeah, treat her like a lady. Hey. Yeah, all that stuff, man. All right. That wicker vessel is a is someone that you. This is a vase. All right. It's gold and silver and precious stones and diamonds and what have you. It is a vase. It is weak. And if it falls, it shatters. All right. And it's gone. So God says she's a weaker vessel. Mm -hmm. You put her up. All right. And in case her in glass. And when people come over to the house, they see the vase encased. And it says that is beautiful. If you had put it on the floor, the people will say, are you a fool? You don't put something as precious and expensive like that on the floor for it to trip over and break. You put it up and encase it so that people can admire it. It is precious. So you make sure you secure it. And when you they come over to the house, you brag on it. You say, oh, man, this right here. You see this vase here? And you put it at the front door. You don't put it in the basement. Mm -mm, no, you don't put it in the bedroom, okay, because people don't belong in your bedroom. You understand what I'm saying? You don't put it on the back porch unless the back porch is the grand room. You understand? The great room. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? You put that thing at the front door. So as soon as they walk in, recognize the woman of the house. There she is. Ooh, wow. She is beautiful. Yes, don't touch her. Mm -mm. You see this case? It's in case she is a weaker vessel and I must cherish her. I die for this girl right here. Yes, I will. And that's how she should be taken care of, admired, all right? And I talk about that, Shimmer's Plug, in my book, The Four Women That Men Desire. I talk about this girl called C7. She is absolutely perfect for this man. Y'all saying, ain't no perfect women on the earth. Use a lie. The Bible even says, Mark, the perfect man. So how could they be a perfect, if there ain't no perfect man or woman, then how am I su supposed to mark him? <laughs> how? All right? All right? Perfect simply means to be mature. Mark is perfect person, all right? And God has given us men, these women, who will introduce us to things or they see things we don't see. God gave us Eve, gave Adam Eve, because Eve saw stuff that, Adam didn't see she is the help me and the great business partner in any business can see further than the, the partner. She sees side things and, and back roads and what have you that this partner can't see. And then this partner, whatever he can or she can't see, he or she sees for the other partner. See, because he's good at left uh, twix and he's good at right twix. <laughs> You understand? And they see over each other. You understand? So Eve, this woman, she's an envisionary, and she can see things before man sees. And she, he's walking down the street, and he's getting ready to walk into a room with a whole bunch of silly women. And his, this woman, she see her man walking into this room with a whole bunch of silly women and say, Who the who? Huh? Don't go in there, baby. Why? It's silly women in there. <laughs> Turn around, boy. Turn around. Go the other way. Thank you, baby. I, I ain't even see that. I know you didn't see that. Because you don't understand, women. But I do. That's what your woman does. She sees further than what you can see. Because men are, are, are we are, we, we operate through our eyes. And our nose. We can, we can, we look and we see. And say, I want that. And the woman looks in the, in the deepest parts, all right? In the inner deeper parts. That's why God told that, that the prophet says, uh -uh, you looking on the outward appearance of this man. He said, now go and anoint me a king. And the first dude you saw, you getting ready to pour oil on this boy. And he says, don't be fooled by the outward appearance of man. He says, I'm God. I look on the heart of man. He ain't the one. The oil will never pour. Venting out and that I'm venting and say, oh, what's and then he, he like, okay, what about the next one? Nope, he ain't the one. What about the next one? Nope, he ain't the one. He went through all that. Is it Jesse? Uh, boy, is it? Mm -mm, mm, ain't the one. So the one that he didn't see, 
the one that wasn't in the house was the one that God picked from. Said, uh, go on the back there. And I have a boy in the back, but nah, he's just an old ruddy boy. He back there uh, uh, kicking over cows and, and killing lions and tigers and bears. Oh, my. That boy back there, he, he ain't all that good looking. He's short and, and squinchy. <laughs> okay? He ain't all that, but you want him? I don't know. Go back there and check him out. All right, boys, y'all go to your room because ain't none of y'all worthy to be king. All right? He went back there and he saw him. And God says, that's the man. That's the one. And that's what women, that's their lives for us. Brothers, the woman will say, hey, whoa, uh-uh. That ain't the right job for you, babe. Come on. That job right there is offering me $100,000. And the woman's supposed to say, that ain't the one for you, baby. That ain't the one. That one over there is the one. But, baby, that one pays $20,000 less. I know. But that's the one for you. Come on, babe. Don't you want that fur coat? Don't you want that new house and the picket fence and uh, three cars in, in the garage? No, baby. I don't need all that. That one over there is for you because we can grow with that one right there. That one right there could be a blessing to our family. Oh, babe. Oh, I can't believe what. Oh, all right. And he turned out, he turned out, the, he took her advice and went to that job. And then over a short period of time, he is now the CEO of that corporation because he listened to his wife. And so the scriptures are very plain and clear and expressive is this. You are supposed to submit one to another. Y'all don't think y'all getting it. Y'all ain't getting this right here. Y'all ain't getting it. Every time a preacher get up to talk about marriage, love and marriage, love and marriage, go together like a horse and carriage. This I tell you, brother. All right, that love. He said, brothers, you're supposed to love your wife. And that's it. God told you to love because you don't, you don't know how to love. You got to be reminded. But women obey your husbands. You know, before this is right. All right. And then y'all closed the books and went home and said, I'm the king of my castle. But you stop reading because the scripture says obey or submit that is one to another i submit to my wife because my wife is smart <laughs> she's intelligent she sees something i don't see and if i submit to her she can help me in that whole protection of the home mm -hmm. Ooh, to the wee i'm preaching uh oh i can see now uh because i'm healed set free come on sherry come on where the musician well <laughs> John, tunnel vision. I need some peripheral help. Come on. You got tunnel vision. Yes, yes. So ladies, 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 you are precious. You are precious and you don't ever have to compare yourself to an ass or a donkey. We get the story. The prophet was stubborn and the ass spoke up and says, you beaten me. I've been good to you for since you was a little boy. I've been carrying you around here and now you're going to beat me and I'm trying to tell you don't go here. You about to die. You about to die? Stop! And the, and the, the boy had to finally repent to the monkey. I mean, to the to the donkey. Okay, the donkey. God gave the mouth to speak. So women like to use that analogy to say, if God can use an ass, God can use me. Stop, ladies. You just make brothers laugh when you use that analogy. God don't. You don't need to be compared to an ass. I forgot to send you. Just be a good wife to the man. Be a good sister uh, to your brother. Uh, be a good auntie and a good mother. Just be a good person, all right, who can instruct and teach and correct uh, and, and rebuke and all these things. And don't worry about them calling you a bee or a hoe or a bitter woman. Ah, forget the naysayers. Who cares? You just keep doing the work and create and produce in your community and raise up your sons and daughters to love their fathers. Oh man. Don't be don't be the <laughs> Ball Clark, I can't. I can't read this because sometimes my mama watches. I can't. I can't. Yeah, I can't read this. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> and that's it. Cussing again. <laughs> Come on. Submit one to another. Be sure to choose wisely. Uh Pitt says. Pitt says. All right. Pitts had a birthday a couple days ago. Did y'all say happy birthday to uh, Demetri Pitts? Did y'all say that? Please, can, can somebody say that? Because I said it late. And I've been redeemed. I said it late. All right. Uh, 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 you on a <laughs> A great addict coming. Really. I know the actress. Can, can somebody uh, hack a net account and then shut, and shut her Facebook down? <laughs> Go in there in the back door and hack her account and shut it down. All right, y'all. I think I've talked enough. Uh, ladies, you know who you are. And you know whose you are. And you need to go back home now and talk to your daughters. You understand? 
Talk to your daughters. Sit them down and, and show them this depiction that they see on the TV and on their phones. Go through their, their music selections and sit down there and say, all right, baby, I want to be a part of your life. Mm -hmm. I want to be a part of your life. Oh, okay, mom. They're going to look awkward. They're going to they gonna feel awkward, okay? And you say, hey, listen, I want to hear your music. Play me one of your favorite songs and have them to play it. And then you Google the lyrics. Google the lyrics. And then you read the lyrics to her very slowly, Okay. This is your assignment. I'm giving you homework. And then you point out the lyrics to her, line by line, precept upon precept, here a little, there a little, okay? Line by line, all right? Read it slow to her and says, what does this mean? What does this mean to you? What does this mean to your mother? What does this mean to us who are African Americans here? Hmm? All right, do, is this appropriate? And what does this mean? How does this make you feel to be called a bitch, a whole? How, how does that feel? You okay with this? And if they're okay with all of that, you got a problem on your hands, and you need to sit down a little bit more and spend more time with your daughter. You understand? I'm talking to you later because I'm going to have to do a show with the brothers too, all right? I'm, I'm, I'm going to have to do that show a little later on, okay? But sit with your daughters and say, hey, this ain't you. This ain't representative of you. And when I was coming up, this wasn't me in it either, and we didn't allow this. So I'm not sure why you feel this is okay, but apparently we have a problem here, and I need to reconstruct this whole mentality that you feel that this is okay to listen to and call your friends at school bees and hoes and all these things. You should do that. And when you do that, uh, can you report back to me and us and let us know how that went? Hmm? You on Facebook, go ahead and, and, and report back to us and go back to this show. Or go on my wall and, and, and put on the wall your conversation. It ain't got to be, we don't have to know everything, but generally you can put on the wall and say, I talk with my daughter and oh God. <laughs> say, oh God, we in trouble. Or oh God, he's, he's, he's blessed us, all right? Go on uh, you on YouTube, go ahead, do that assignment and come back and let's talk about this. And see what we can do. See, because people talk all the time. We talk and talk and talk about what we ain't doing, what we ain't doing, what we ain't doing. All right? But there's the people who are doing doing things to help a community. We don't hear from them. All right? Or you don't examine them. You don't know who they are. All right? So instead of me complaining, what have you, I have taken into myself to do something about it. So when I talk to my daughter, we talk about all this. Me and my daughter, Rebecca, and my other daughters that I've adopted. Every time we sit down, we talk about boys, and pop culture, and hip hop, and all the things that that generation loves, I bring it up. So tell me about this boy. Okay, and, and tell me more. And I just, I just drilling in them, drilling in them, all right? Because I, I want them to know I ain't a silent partner in this. I'm your father. I might be much older than you, but I want to make sure that you're safe, mind, body, and soul. All right? Y'all can ask my daughter. She'll tell you. I'm going to start doing some shows with her. She live right upstairs, for those of you who don't know. My daughter, Rebecca, lives right upstairs. <laughs> and I'm going to start having her on this show. Baby, I'm on, I'm on the air. Come downstairs. <laughs> She's going to come downstairs and sit with me and say, all right. So, let's listen to your music. I got to go. Uh... What y'all saying here, uh, Victoria, how do you address this in your etiquette classes? Uh, I know Victoria was here earlier, but I don't see her. Um, I don't know if she's still here. Okay, I gotta go. Yeah, uh, go to chapter seven if you got the book. Hey, I wanna also thank y'all because usually I rank in the, out of 50,000 books in this category, I have three, I have six categories on, on Amazon, but three categories that you see. Uh, I usually rank about three, four, five hundred, okay, on Amazon. I'm now, at the time of this recording, I'm ranked about 70. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? I'm ranked about 70 out of about 50,000 books in the categories that I'm in. 70. Ain't God good? So, if y'all keep going... I'll be number one 
overnight. It's because of you. The Sir Walter Jones show. No, sorry. Uh, the 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 four women that men desire on Amazon. If you get that book, uh, I will thank you personally for taking me to number one. Um, I did the Elder Rodney Jones Sunday School. Uh, I will be doing it again. For those of you who are watching me on YouTube right now, I will be back on the Elder Rodney Jones Sunday School. Then he uploads the shows on Wednesday mornings. We will be recording it tomorrow, and Wednesday we are on the air, all right, on YouTube. So go there. It is an amazing lesson. So if you want to catch up with us, uh, we're in 2 Corinthians chapter 13. Uh, first one, I think. I don't know. Anyway, it's a great lesson. You might want to show up for that, okay? And then Wednesday morning at 12 afternoon, morning, afternoon, anyway, 12 noon, I'm on the a mind, body, and soul with a net this Wednesday. That's two days from now if you're watching this on a Monday, okay? It's going to be a very busy week for me, and thank God for a good week. All right, I removed my link and inboxed you. Okay, thank you for all that you do for, hey man, thank you, uh, John Butler. You inboxed me? Okay, all right, well, I'm going to check it out and uh, see what you see what you got. Okay, all right. I gotta go. I know you've been tired, and it seems like it's been going on for years. Oh, yeah. don't you ever let go? Don't let go. Don't let go. Don't you ever. play at, at the end. Cortez, thank you, man. I appreciate it. Uh, I got people on YouTube says, man, can you just play a little bit more and shut up? <laughs> so that's why I do uh, I do my evening manners. It's just all playing. It's some singing. See, I sing only for guidance because I don't have the voice. I'm not a singer. All right. I'm not a, a soloist. That's not my gift. All right. I teach vocals for choirs and groups, but you ain't got to be the greatest soloist to teach vocals, all right? So I do that. But I only sing to guide the song. I guide you to the piano, <laughs> okay? That's what I do. I guide you to the piano. That's why sometimes you'll see me do this, and I'm singing. I, I point you to the piano because I don't want you to pay attention to this, but this is a guiding post. <laughs> Alexa, say good night to the people. Good night. Hope you had a great day. She likes y'all. She's back. She's back. She's blinking the black. Hit the share button if you're on Facebook. Go ahead. Part two is coming. Part two of this show is coming. Uh, I got a great write-up, a little expose that was sent to me, and I'm going to do it, but I'm going to do it in a special way. Oh, y'all know me. I'm going to do it a real nice, real nice life. Part two coming. Get ready. Love y'all. Bye-bye.